Hi, my name's uh, Adam. I'm creative director at Berg Studio. For those watching, you probably know my face. I'm not going to dwell on who I am while I'm speaking, but who, what I am going to do is introduce uh, Niels Leonard. Uh, hi. Uh, Niels is in London. He is a former chief, chief uh, creative officer of Grey in London. But maybe more recently, and perhaps more interestingly, he is one of the co-founders of Uncommon Creative Studio. Hello. Hello, hello. So thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule. Um, we're graduating here in Sweden, and we've got a whole bunch of Swedish graduates that are about to burst onto the Swedish stage and the local stage. Yeah. Um, when you think about Sweden in the context of uh, creativity and kind of advertising and marketing, what's the kind of thing that jumps into your head? Well, I've got, um, I don't know whether I'm closer than most or further or whatever, but I've got quite a clear picture. I mean, I've always viewed Sweden as incredibly creative. I mean, genuinely, I uh, used to be, yeah, like you said, at Grey. Um, I was on their creative council there and uh, I'm a bit of a, a fucker. But there were only two people on that council that I genuinely was like, no, they're better than me. Um, one was Bjorn Stahl. Who, That's a Swedish name. Yeah, Bjorn um, is incredible. You know, Ingo, that whole thing. But he's come out of there, did the Swedish number as a piece of work, which I'm sure you guys are bored shitless of hearing about. But, um, you know, he's an incredible guy. And I think consistently brought very ferocious famous work to bear and and he recently did the rotting whopper thing which i was actually like less keen on but he's amazing and and he was one of those guys that it didn't feel like he'd scrabbled on something or hit the jackpot once it felt like he had a way of thinking that just returned to me to be brilliant um forgive me for rambling but i've also got a crush on just in general swedish design thinking right right I worked for volvo for many years staggered me that they gave away the seatbelt. They told me this story about road deaths. Yeah. They said, um, everyone in the, in the world's lowering the speed limits from 30 to 20, blah, 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 blah. Um, so we've just started this program. And what we realized is actually 30 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour, yeah, there's less deaths, but you still get hit. What we realized is the problem isn't that, the problem is that there's a path next to a road. So we're gonna start a whole program of city development where that doesn't happen. I was just like, my God, to fundamentally think that simply from a design perspective just staggered me. So I was, I've got loads of pictures of Sweden in my mind creatively, man. And I, I think um, it's a very fertile place and very inspiring place to me. Uh, another thing that kind of pops into my head and we talk to a lot of young and they're, they're pretty ambitious grads. And a lot of them, I guess, have London in their mind. How do you like, how do you kind of introduce London as a, as a destination for eager creatives. What's your take on the London scene? Uh, well, I think it's changed massively. I mean, I'd like to believe it's always been a pull for anyone with creative ambition. I mean, uh, weirdly, I've always hired quite a few Swedes and Danes uh, in my history, you know, Jonas and Rasmus, Henrik Riddeheim, currently working with me and, um, you know, a few others, but it's, um, I think the truth is you've just got to follow the companies or people that you think are making the style of work you wish you could make. That's always what I've believed. And, and when you start a company, you get to paint a picture of what that company's, the type of person that company might be for. Um, Uncommon, I think, has a really clear view of the style of work and brands we want to make. Hopefully that appeals to some of the guys at Berg's. I suspect it does because Berg's have always put out brilliant thinkers, but very unconventional thinkers. You've never seen to me to have put out people with, you know, rows of three ads in a row with a logo bottom right. That doesn't seem to me what you, you do a lot of. So, um, you know, it's always struck me as a great fit, London. Um, that said, I mean, I, I do think the London marketplace, just to be honest and candid and try and give you some perspective, has yeah. changed massively. I think the players in London are very different. I think some of the places that were, I guess, you know, historic forts of creative brilliance aren't as much anymore. I, I would yeah. rather than that, of course. But, <laughs> um, but then I always did, right? Like I went to Grey when it was crap uh, and tried to do something with it, you know, and, and I've started Uncommon in a recession. So... But, um, you know, I think the places that you would ordinarily go, they're amazing, are doing less well. Um, I think there's a lot of places they're trying to reinvent themselves and some good people here. Mm. So I think I wouldn't just be looking at the, the, the agencies or the studios that are, are, have been, his, you know, interesting historically. I'd be looking to the leadership teams, really, and saying to yeah. yourself, okay, who's got a bit of energy? Who's spent a bit of money? Who's put some new people in place? Because 
I can tell you from massive experience, those people need other people and they need yep. energy and they need people with young, new energy that are just go, I don't care what this used to be. We're going to go and get it. And that's how we did what we did at Gray. And, and arguably that's how we've grown what we've grown at Uncommon. If you are, if you're graduating now, uh, is there any, are there places in the world that you think are doing great work by more than just accident? Yeah, of course. Um, sorry, I'd like, I mean, and not with any arrogance, but I think you've got to look at all the people putting their stall out to make something. I mean, it's founder led businesses. That's easy for me to say, but I, I think there are companies where that creative culture is still flying. I just don't think it's perhaps some of the traditional agencies. Yeah. I don't think Uncommon's recent success hasn't been, and I'm not saying this with any arrogance. It's not been a result of kind of lucky bounces or whatever. A lot of our clients have se selected us on that vision and that view. Not, yep. not around excellent, you, you don't have to like our work, that's not what I'm saying, but, but there's absolutely an intent to create brands that people care about and have a different relationship and a positive impact. And that's drawn people to us. There are other places like that for sure. I mean, if I were, I'd be looking at places like Heatherwick Studios, you know? Okay. I'd be looking at um, the gaming studios. I think some of the most creative, and I mean genuinely creative, game-changing messes that are happening happening in gaming are happening um in the spread of entertainment and, and programming formats you know um i'd be looking at all that i'd be looking at how 3d technology is changing things you know yeah. I, you guys graduating I, I sort of thought to myself well they're going to ask me what do we do when we graduate this fucking you i'm going to ask that but yeah. I'll, I'll save i'll save the boring oh, predictable stuff at the end sorry well i was just i was just going to sort of say like do you know there are a sh in this weird fucked up time there are a shortage of jobs probably and, and and openings and everyone's a bit scared and retreating but there are also a load of startups there are a load of yeah. chances being taken there's a lot of money in new ideas going around and i wondered adam if it were interesting to view this generation of graduates as maybe the generation most likely to start a brand as opposed to create an advert yeah, I mean, if you look at, like, if you look historically, I mean, it, it feels like doom and gloom when you finish and it feels like you're, you know, the industry's dropped off a cliff or the world that you expected to exist no longer exists. But there's so much innovation that happens in those, yep. those down weird years. Yeah. Well, mate, I mean, even the reactions of some of our clients has been interesting. So some of them and the reaction of the majority of clients, I think, in the UK, less so on commons, but a lot of the others have retreated. Um, because in a moment of crisis, they're kind of going, what's appropriate to say? The businesses with a really clear purpose and vision, I think have gone at it and they've gone, actually, we yeah. should matter now more than ever. So ITV, we've made 250 films for ITV in the last six weeks, you know, and whether that's right or wrong, those guys have gone for it. Brewdog have gone for it. Yeah. Uh, found the led business, you know, he, he doesn't see any other choice than to go out and try and do something. And I think those are the businesses you want to gravitate toward in, in this moment or in any really. Yeah, there is like this year's theme is yes and, and it's all about building positivity and kind of building momentum. And it's like, you know, when you say yes and, you have a whole lot of bad ideas, but some of them are actually good. Yeah. Um, so it's like, I think, you know, if you look out there, it's people with that attitude and with the confidence to do that when it doesn't feel like the intuitive, because the intuitive thing feels like to kind of retreat, yep. keep keep the money in the bank and just yep. wait to see what happens. But it's like, it's certainly an interesting attitude. You know, when everyone else is zigging, you know, zagging is yeah. a good idea. Or, or Virginia Woolf, you know, far more <laughs> early than that, right? Said you can't find peace by avoiding life, which I love that. Okay. It's beautiful. You can't fucking find peace by hiding away. You're not going to find peace there. You're not going to find anything there. That's the truth. You know, and I, I kind of, I was speaking to someone the other day at Monocle and I was like, you know what else is a virus? Lethargy, cynicism, yeah. worry, they spread too, you know? And I think the only thing that keeps a creative mind buoyed is seeing other creatives get work in the world, is realizing that we can make things that might matter in any situation. So I, I kind of feel like for our, for our minds, as much as our success is, we've got to try, we've got to do something. Yeah. Uh, you know, I really do. That's, that's my mindset anyway. I mean, you know. So when you, when you guys decided to start uh, Uncommon, you, you know, you've got a really good chance to wipe the slate and, yeah. and build it on principles and ideas that you believe in and that you think the world needs. How did you, how do you think like 
how do you build positivity or momentum into both uh, the people you attract to work inside the organization and, you know, to work with you and clients that are willing to kind of put themselves out there and kind of, you know, with a bit more yes and attitude? Uh, it's the same for both. I mean, we, we started Uncommon with the positioning that we wanted to create brands that people really in the real world wish existed and that we believed in them working a different way. Um, we have a quote at the, the start of every deck we present, which is from Death of a Salesman, which is I'm not interested in stories about the past or any crap of that kind because the woods are burning. <laughs> That's a good one. We it's love an oldie it. but a goodie. It is, but it implies to us that there is always a crisis, whether it's COVID, whether it's your category, whether it's sales. And you either have a choice in that moment that you're either going to be someone who's going to act and take advantage of it in that moment of change or not. And that's self-selecting for talent as much as it is for clients, man. And that's been our positioning. And honestly, that's, I think that's been the key to the last two and a half years. You know, the very first piece of work we made was for Ovo Energy, you know, yep. persuading them to launch a green energy tariff, not just to make an ad for it. You know, the strategy of adopting green energy, then to make a fucking badass ad with Slayer on it. You know, all of that stuff is formed from, from starting the conversation, though, in the same place. You know, I, I hated at Grey, um, to your point about yes and, right? At Grey, I spent my life trying to convince clients that had come in for one thing to buy yep. another thing. You know, so they'd come in for, you know, I don't know, the, the ease or this. Yep. And I was like, buy life paint. And they'd be like, why? At Uncommon, I don't have to do that. Uh, uncommon they come in for what uncommon makes and i make more of what uncommon makes right and that is a really powerful thing if you can find companies where you genuinely hear about what they're about and you go that's me that's where you need to go because there's so many less barriers to getting your work out you know so all of that's really useful information do you have any feedback for creatives that find themselves in an environment where they're getting too many no's or you know they feel like they're just smashing themselves against no like like what would what advice do you give to people that just like that aren't getting stuff through or aren't getting it made or just are not getting a I yes some, yeah i mean God, I've got a few things. So if I can, I, I really would love this to be useful. I really would. So I'm going to try and articulate. There's a couple of tactics and things like that that I can give you that I hope will be useful. And then there's a far more fundamental truth behind that, which we just need to talk about, I think. But there's some great tactics. I mean, the first thing is to be so competent and able to build your thinking, your ideas without dependency on lots mm -hmm. of other people and present them that you need less people to be in the room. Because when you're in the room, presenting your work past all the barriers in your own organization, right? You're able to manifest and see what's blocking it. Emotional intelligence is one of the creative's biggest weapons. And if we don't get to use it, we're not going to make our work real. So that's critical, right? You, you should be able to build, design, code, and edit. Because not needing anyone else means you're quicker to make what you need to make to sell it. Yeah, totally. Once you've done all that, you need to be in the room and you need to make decks that make people go, fuck me, that's real. That's, I can see that. Yeah, all that, I know that sounds incredibly simple, but that stuff is the barrier. Going to someone with a postage stamp who has a limited view, whether that's your creative director <laughs> or your client, is never going to work. You've got to make people feel it. So that stuff doesn't go away, I'm afraid. That's critical. But there is a bigger question there, man, which is like, if you're doing that and you really believe you're articulating your ideas well, do you really, and they keep saying no, you're probably in the wrong place. You know? Yeah. Uh, you are, man. And there's that thing... I always ask people, which is the hardest question to answer because it's horrible, but are you dependent on people less ambitious than you to make your dreams come true? Because that's the real question here. If you're sat and you're dependent on someone who is less ambitious than you are, then how's that ever going to fucking work? Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a difficult question for, you know, young creatives to ask themselves. Well, I think, but I think, you know, in the feedback you're getting, right? Like I would say this to everyone at Uncommon who's young, don't get me wrong. No one's like hundred percent nailing it every time. And we're like, we're off. Yeah. But when young guys come in and they go, here's my thinking, my thinking. We don't give them like, I'm not saying we're amazing at feedback, but they can tell very clearly whether the idea is not good or whether it's not been expressed well enough. Yeah. And we're really, really ferocious about making sure that our reviews, man, they're like, they're like meetings. Yeah. We're open. We're fluid. We've got decks. We're already building. We're already designing. So, I think the quicker you can get to that, the more visual and literate your ideas are, the bigger a chance they stand up being made. You know, imagine if someone comes into a meeting and a guy's got a bit of paper and he goes, this is amazing. 
and someone mm. else comes into a meeting, which I think, by the way, is a very Berg's point of view, and they've built a fucking film or a site, and they go, look at this. Well, which one is closer to reality? You know, and that's totally, you know, and that's that's experience from a brand building point of view, Adam, as well. Which mm. is everyone kind of goes, oh, building a brand is so hard. It's the same as making an ad. You make a series of images, and then you give them to the world, and then people start to understand you exist. And the next yeah. thing you, know, you have a brand, <laughs> you know, that was Halo. Um, yeah. You know, and it's so I, I think that's a really critical trick um, is working out where, where the feedback's coming from. Is this because I didn't express it well enough? Or is this really because this is not what these guys want? You know? Yeah. Um, no, it's, it's really, it's definitely a, an important thing. So this is going to be watched by a whole bunch of grads. And sure. I'm going to ask you this cliche question that you, right. you might have preempted it, but I'll try and find an interesting way of, of spinning it. All right. Obviously, I'm going to ask you about if you could go back and give yourself advice as a young, uh, ambitious grad. What, do, what is there one thing you wish you knew walking out of your school or university or something? Well, I didn't go to uni, so that's a different thing for me. Um, I mean, I, I got a job in the job centre, so I, this is very different for me. I, I wanted to believe you could make money from creativity. I didn't understand that you could. Right. right? So that's a really different place. Um, if I could go back and give my very early me a talking to, there's a few things, you know, two, two main things, man. Um, don't be a critic or a passenger. Don't, okay. don't you, the, the biggest regret of my life was writing a private view when I first became a creative director where I slagged everything off. Right. And, uh, I realized I'd never been weaker in all my life, mm. right? I didn't need to slag things off. I make work. You've seen my work. That's my, that's my thing. Yeah. And, and every review should be a lesson in that. I didn't realize that until very late. I think I'd have gone further quicker if I'd stopped worrying so much about building this critique and persona of, you know, ju just add, just make, yeah. You know, don't deal in that. Don't deal in commentary. You can get lost in Twitter wars and just, <laughs> just make and build and do it almost with blinkers on where yeah. you're not listening to any of that shit. That's one thing. Um, the other, which I really underestimated, and, and I think creatives still underestimate, is creative leadership is the biggest form of leadership. That's what I learned at Gray. So whether you like it or not, at other, loca other, other institutions have a CEO, and usually the yep. CEO top of the tree. And I'm only saying this because literally you've got to start seeing this from the, from the very start of your, of your working career. CEO is top of the tree, and then the creative sit director sits down here or whatever. That's how it used to work. It doesn't work like that now. If you can creatively impact on your business, you can creatively lead it, meaning you can just lead your business. So they, they, they gave this title to myself and another guy called Tor Mirren, who's now the CMO at Apple who ran Grey New York, I was creative chairman. And essentially it was the creative leader of the company, i.e. the leader of the company. Yeah. So stop viewing yourself as people that color in. You're not there <laughs> to color yes. in. You're not there to turn up to a meeting. You're there with an agenda to make the best work you can, but also to improve everybody around you. That's a massive power. And the reason I'm saying that is the more people that come with you, the closer your ideas are to being real. If you yeah. walk into the room and every time everyone goes, oh, thank God he's here or she's here. Thank fuck she's in the room. She always nails it. And I love her. You know, if you can make everyone around you better, and that is a form of leadership, I yeah. promise you, you will, you will rise rapidly. That's a massive skill. And, and all the other people I would argue, you guys might hold up as, as legends, Droger, other people like that. Droger's biggest skill is people. You know, that yeah. guy is incredible at people. Yeah, totally. I mean, Droga is like, obviously being Australian, you get to see the Droga story a little bit earlier than everyone else. But uh i mean his big talent was like convincing great people and people yeah. that were probably better than him in yeah. certainly in lots of different areas to kind of jump on board the droga train yeah i think that's true of us i think there's no there's no way i'm better than half the people that work at uncommon fuck me man we've got some incredible people and all i well, the only deal i try and make because this is something i've worked out about creatives is they just want to make and make put work put work into the world yeah, most weirdly, I used to think we were worried about money or, you know, whatever. We just want to make. Yeah. And so the more I can make that happen, the more I can make Uncommon a proper creative studio that makes work, 
and the more they're, they're making, the happier everybody is. And if I unlock that for people, that is a form of magic, right? Whether or not I'm as good as they are at whatever. And I think that's the Droga thing or any leadership thing. Yeah. Is how are you making everyone around you slightly better? Um, that's a massive skill, man. I'm sure there are people on your course doing that right now, right? Like, yeah, absolutely. It's, um, what do you think, uh, do you have any advice? Obviously, we've got a whole bunch of grads going into a world that is dominated by gloomy mm. Guardian style headlines and all of that kind of stuff. So if you were stepping into the crazy fucked up world of 2020 yeah. uh, as a young grad, what kind, of, what kind of tips or advice would you have for, for someone who's pretty decent but facing a tough little world? Yeah, man, for sure. I mean, um, well, like I said, bear in mind, lots of stuff is, is retreating, but lots of stuff's being born. Yeah. There are a lot of hungry fuckers. And maybe let's not look at the creative scenario. Let's look at any other that are looking at this going, well, things have changed. And by the way, Bergs have always been very good at this, I think, which is kind of going business-wise, category-wise. What if we cross this with this? Or what if we cross yeah. this? Well, that's never been more true of the situation we're in now, right? Like do we need people to bring us money and cash because we can't go to a machine? Do we need people like, look at all the changes in behavior yeah. and, and completely free yourselves of advertising for a second and ask yourself how you can add to that or improve it. And I mean that tangibly. Um, the thing I tell every grad, regardless of this conversation or the timing we're in is please go and make yourselves famous now for something okay. without, without needing anybody. Like I want to see your names in a paper. Yeah, there are a of guys we spoke to in the UK who went to the Tate and stood there all day with a ping pong ball in their mouth. Great, and, you know, they were in the paper a day later. Yep. Like, like they had about hundred thousand tourists walk past them and take photos of them. Um, the world always needs more performance art. Absolutely. I mean, you know, that's a good <laughs> example. But but what have you made? What bit of commentary? What powerful image? What statement? What product or what brand have you made on your own without needing somebody? And I'm saying this twofold. One, that's fucking attractive to companies like mine and to other brands. But two, you'll feel better. You'll feel yeah. so much better about yourself because you're, you're powerful. You're not dependent, you know? And I think that's so critical. So, so don't just make a great book. Think about it and go, well, if we wanted to do that, what are the barriers to doing that? And then get real. If it's a year and a half away, don't do it. If it's two weeks of hard work to make an image and put it on a poster site that you blagged for free, yeah. go, do it. go do it. And do it monthly. The people that are the most valued the ones i would chew my arm off for are the ones that don't need me right right that's true of all of us independence is so so sexy so if i meet people and there's teams like that at uncommon who just whether i like it or not are making that work all month and i'm yeah. like oh, man you know and it's a joy working with them and all i'm trying to do is make their work better and better and better but we put these candles out recently called sense yeah. and formality yeah right absolutely um, but the guys that's like a two week project, man. That went from conception to being real in two weeks. Yeah. I think it, it really is just having that attitude that th good ideas should be real in one way or another. And it's like that this yeah. stuff deserves to be more than just a crappy JPEG in a PDF yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Well, you're, you're st I, and I know this is a pet, pet hate of mine, but you're still asking permission. If you've got yeah. it in your book, you're still saying, please, can I make this? As opposed to, I went and made this. What do you think? because this was out there um you know and it's such a powerful place to be and you'll be surprised because everyone always says here well what about money or what about pick up the phone yeah think about my i promise you this it sounds mad there's no shortage of money for stuff right yeah there's a shortage of money to get paid guys don't get me wrong by the way i used to be rich when i ran great i now run a startup so we can talk <laughs> about that but you've deferred your richness for later yeah <laughs> hopefully <laughs> um, but there is but there is no shortage of money for stuff so the guys at Earl of East Candles were super happy that we'd come up with a new idea that might work in candles because they need a way to draw fame to them, right? Think about everyone else around your idea that might want to make it happen and get really good at bringing them into the fray. That's, that's how to do it. Cool. Um, when you meet young creatives, how long, does it take, how long does it take to work out if they're any good or not? Well, ideally, like I said, that's 100% easier if they've got stuff in their book that's real. So if, if they open their book and there's a headline from the Daily Mail and it says, you know, young girl <laughs> creates statement toothbrush that made its way onto BuzzFeed. I'm like, well, you understand already. Yeah. You understand. That's the game. Um, but I think I think um, what you learn very quickly is an ability to listen is speed and hunger and shared ambition. You pick up on that. Um, 
I think you, you learn it quite quickly. I mean, the people that thrive at Uncommon, as I said, share our values. So I think it's really important that you do that wherever you work, because if you come and land and your values are different to theirs, you're just going to have a tough time because their version of good is going to be different to yours, you know? Yeah, um, totally. And that's already a stumbling block. So you must really, I think it's about selecting the people. Um, but honestly, it's mindset, it's proactivity, it's learning the rhythms of a company very quickly. You know, well, what do these guys like to do in meetings? How do they like to present? Steal from that stuff, you know, learn like, oh, right, that's really clever. They write fake headlines, da, 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 da. you know, well, that's really smart. These guys always bring a little box into the room with a logo on it, yep. you know, oh, right. Um, those sorts of things and just get bigger and better and grow every week. The people, the people that stick around are the ones you really feel like are growing, you know, so um, yeah. It's a, like, it can be a tough industry uh, from an energy point of view. And it's like, it's like to be good at this. And like, I always tell people, if you're not, if you don't want to be good, go work in a fucking bank. Like yeah. we don't need more middling average creatives yeah. in the world. We have enough already. So it's yeah. like to be good, it demands a certain amount of energy and yeah, just energy to throw yourself into things. Yeah. Do you have any advice for people to kind of like, you know, keep the, the saw sharp and to manage their energy and away from, you know, away from their work? Uh, there's two questions in there for me. One is, how do you keep the energy to keep going, to keep yeah. being brilliant and to keep pushing for a really high level? I've always believed that actually comes from, from other stuff. This is my point of view, but it comes from wanting to prove people wrong. It comes from, um, needing to matter it comes from other dark personal places and i think that's okay i i've always said that i think frustration i think being overlooked i think no are all really really powerful drivers you know sometimes i feel like giving up and then i remember i've got a lot of motherfuckers to prove wrong that's been yep. on my desk for 15 years or something yep. and i think um i think we've all got a version of that and i, I so i think that personal stuff should keep you going I think heroes and villains are good. And I mean, mm -hmm. in this world, like, so who, who every time you hear from them or see their work or whatever, and it could be in any field, do you yeah. go, I just want to channel that. So yeah. I've got a crush, you know, I mean, I'm sure like everyone, Donald Glover, right? Like unbelievable. I'm like, Christ, okay. How he goes about his work, the, the nature of building his aesthetic, the whole approach, Nick Cave, you know, yes. like, and I just go find some of them and equally find villains, you know, and work out why they, why you don't like them. What, what are they doing that's wrong? Why are they misusing their platform? What yeah. Your platform is going to challenge that, you yep. know, but I guess take it personally is my real advice. That that's the everyday thing, you know, and, um, uncommon thing is life is too short to just make an advert to half make a decent advert. I want to literally fundamentally transform it. Here's, here's a good one for you. The whole reason this started was a guy said to me, in a brief, how do we go from being a company that sells shit to people to being a company that people wish existed? Yeah. And I thought that was a massive question, right? That was a Honda client back in the day. Then I was like, well, never mind you. How do we? How do we go to being a company that people? Now, how many ad agencies do you know that the real world loves? Oh, it's some days none. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, how do we build that company? Now that's worth getting out of bed for to me. That's like Pixar. That's like Apple. That's like, that's where I want Uncommon to be. I want to be the guys designing the Olympic torch in three years time. I want to be, yeah. you know, and that for me is why people get out of bed at Uncommon. I think, you know, now you've got to find your version of that, your version of those events. What is that? But get that and hold to that. Um, you know, and, and in terms of keeping the energy in the rest of your life, man, genuinely it's weird shit. I got, <laughs> uh, creatives are so bad at their life. We're so bad at life. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I mean, or if or if we are good at life, we're good at it for about six days in a row and then yeah. it all just comes off the rails. Yeah. yeah. So there's a guy, David Patton, who was CEO at Grey, but he was an ex-client and he taught me things like diary and having breakfast meetings. You know, you get an extra hour a day if you want it to just meet people. Yeah. Five of those a week. You know, it's 8.30 till 9.30. It's so funny. And the more routine and formalized you are, the more ruthless you are with putting in a shift and stopping, the better your work will get, you know? Um, it's really important, you know? And I, yeah, I guess just that. And, and the obvious stuff, like inspiration, be around people, see new things, force yourself to do it. 
particularly in COVID, man, I don't know about you, I've been like, I found it really hard to um, find new things. To, okay. be shown, to be shown new things, you know, people have gone like, oh, what series are you watching? I'm like, okay, how do I know about more art? I'm on the same Twitter feeds, on the same fucking Instagram feeds. Yeah. So I've had to try. Uh, but that stuff is 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 the stuff you need to be different. You know, you watch two d- new films you'd never have watched and you watch an online show and the next thing you know, your work's twice as good as it was the day before, right? It's a So work hard at that. Work hard at inspiration. Um, you know, I think David um, Kolbush in London, he's a, a mate of mine. He's really good at that. He's really good at seeing stuff, hearing about stuff. He goes and searches it out. I think he spends the majority of his day doing that. Yeah, um, but you know, it's it's kind of some people are better at it than others. But I'm not naturally good at that. I'd rather naturally be working, and then I'm yeah, like, I, I kind of so so for me, it's important to look up and see that stuff uh, for sure. Cool. Well, I know you're a very busy man, and uh, I just want to thank you for obviously like this means a lot. It's really we get it's very easy to get a whole bunch of Swedish perspectives and Swedish oh. language. So it's also really nice to get a bit of a London perspective on things. And I think the work that you're doing with Uncommon keeps coming up in class discussions, which is hopefully pretty flattering. Hopefully, hopefully yeah. you should be really proud of that because it's like, it comes up in lots of discussions. That's amazing, man. It's really good to hear. Yeah. So, I mean, keep fighting the good fight. I don't know what else to say. Keep, uh, you know, keep trying to push yourselves in interesting directions. Um, yeah, same and with thank you, you for joining us. I know no, it's my absolute pleasure and please, and thank you. Um, you know, look, if there's ever anything else I can do, I'm really annoyed I can't be there in person. I kind of want to come and I've always wanted to go to Berg's, man. And, and like, I've just, so, you know, I, I really like you guys and the work and the people you put out and the, the mindset has always been so, so good. I'm genuinely, you know, genuinely. So um, please keep that up and keep the energy up, you know? Yeah, it's a, like, it's, it's a pretty, it's, I don't know, like, I don't know what it's like for them, but it's pretty fun from my perspective to be around like a school that's actually pretty fucking decent. Like yeah. it's, I don't know, like I went to an okay art school or okay university, but it was like big and slow moving. And it's just like, yeah. I just, I feel like it's a bit of a secret weapon to, to go through Berg's. It's like, I don't know. I've, I've just been on the grad website looking at stuff and it's like the shit there that I would never fucking do when I was that age. No, dude, I, I've always been really impressed. Like I, I use Berg's as a reference point for a lot of people, you know, um, SCA in London is fucking amazing too. Uh, they have a great mindset but there's a handful of schools that I would sit down and go. Yeah, there. what are the other schools that you like the look of at the moment? Honestly, you, you and SEA. Um, that sounds very, very cruel, but I, I think, um, if I'm being really honest, the people that come out of it and also the voice of the schools or whatever are just ferocious. They just, they're not just a, a kind of school. I, I've never believed a school, I learned very late. Like I wanna, I would love to launch a school. I would love to be or play a part in one because yeah. I suddenly realize what they are, right? That yeah, there are a bunch of people trying to learn, but but what you get to do is develop a mindset. Never mind. Yeah, totally. Can I make you good at editing or can I make you good at, you develop a fucking approach to the world in a creative, yeah. you know, and that's a massively powerful thing. And, um, you know, I, like I said, I think you guys have always come out and felt more independent than anyone else. You know, there's been a website with work and a confidence, yeah. a confidence man that comes out of Berg's. That I've always kind of gone, okay, that's good. I feel like you feel that when you meet, when you meet, you know, the, the crew out of Berg's. So don't lose that. No, I like, I, we're pretty careful to hang on to it. And it's like, it's very funny. It's like, there's a whole bunch of cultural stuff that's built into that. Like never underestimate that Swedish stubbornness mm. to just kind of like, you know, yeah. it's, you, you've never met uh, more right people in the world than, you know, when you hang so out true. in Stockholm for a while. So it's so like, true. it's so true. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, um, the one last thing man would be, and I don't know how you do it. And I, but like, if I were you guys, I would try to find a way in the next year or two to be the most prolific for, for new brands launched. Yeah. Not, not, not for jobs gone. For, and they don't have to be your full time, right? But, and I don't mean, I mean, some of them, hopefully, Christ, will be game changing brands and you won't need a job, right? Yeah. That's a pleasant place to be. But what if, what if you guys in the next six months were the most started brands? You know, you went and got funding, you gave them a good spin, you got them up and launched them. I think that would radically shift the world's opinion of you. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, there's stuff that we, we've been talking about, like little incubators or just yeah. like, like early funding or yeah. there's a pretty hot little tech startup scene that's still here. Yeah. And working closer with those guys is good. But like, I just think like, 
you know, it's so weird. It's so, I'm sure you would have noticed this at Gray. It's like, it's so weird that the product is made, everything's set. And then like the really creative thinkers come along to sell it. And it's like, why didn't you bake that into the fucking idea? Like, why isn't that the fucking product? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, a bit more of that thinking I think would go a long way. Yeah, for sure. That's it. Awesome. Anyway, you're a busy man. I'm sure you're probably heading back to the office or... Thank you. I am, yeah. This is the office, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's well, it. Well, thank you very much. And I'm sure we'll talk to you again. Thanks, Adam. Cheers, cool. man. Cool. All right. Thanks, man. Bye.